Grace isn't a five and dime store commodity. It isn't a credit card transaction. It isn't a, you put in, you dime, you take your chance. You pay your dues, you get grace. It isn't something that you deposit into and you get back. <coughs> it isn't something that you can purchase. It is what God does because he loves you. <coughs> God, out of his love, bestows grace. And so a lot of times in, in defining and the definition of grace, people make the mistake of the object of grace as opposed to the action of grace and how God uses grace in order to change lives. He does it by his mercy. Mercy and grace go hand in hand. Now the religionist, the person who seeks to follow a pattern of actions and attitudes directed by a religious mindset, will often think that grace is not enough, so they want to add a criteria to grace. They want to extend a rules and regulations to partake of some type of accountability that they want to put the responsibility of the actions after grace upon a person by making them do something in order to testify or to prove that grace is at work in their life because they want to see the results. The religionist often wants to see grace at work in you. They believe that God died for you, but not necessarily that God has demonstrated his love towards you in extending grace to you. So they want to be in God's place. They want to replace grace or replace themselves in the place of God so that they can see that it is working. Now, that is a lack of faith. The religionists often have lacks of faith in trying to portray grace in any other way except for it's God doing what he does. Now, the failure of the logic of the religionists is to think that grace is something that's automatically given without there being an accountability or responsibility. They fear for this cheap grace that cost Jesus Christ his life. Well, the person bestowing the grace is God. If God doesn't give you grace, you don't got it. If God gives you grace, you got it. It isn't something you automatically get. And that's what the religion is saying. Because the religionist would want to seek to replace relationship with religious practice. And so <coughs> the practice of some law causes them to think that based upon their religious ideas that they will automatically bestow grace upon themselves. And that's where sometimes those that do believe in grace become religionist in their ideas. They think that it's a automatic transaction as though they can sit down and just present to God their case and God's automatically going to give them grace. It doesn't work that way. God is God. We're not. Often, the legalist makes the same mistake as the religionist. The legalist wants to prove that the law still has an effect to cause you to come to a place of being given mercy and grace by trying to pretend that there's some kind of criteria that you have to reach a platform where you're worthy to be bestowed grace. <laughs> Which is really kind of interesting because how could you be worthy of something that's being given to you by God's own choice? You see, the legalist will tr seek to prove to God that he's worthy of something and that in and of himself he has some worth. God frankly says, no, I made you. <laughs> I know what you're worth and what you're not worth. And we've proven and demonstrated throughout history that we're not worth the grace that's being bestowed upon us. God has said that grace we are saved and not out of ourselves but is a gift of God. It is not something that we have ever been able to be recipients of or that we deserve. In fact, we don't deserve grace. And that's why the legalist fails often in defining and re-evaluating where they're coming from with their laws that they seek to add to grace whenever they don't realize that God has taken care of all the works that they're trying to do. 
because it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. So the mercy is the action out or the acting out of grace in our lives. It's God's mercy and grace that he's extending towards us. And so because there's such confusion on this subject, and because so often people want to do something about it, we are taking so long a time to evaluate our definition and to make sure we have a proper understanding of who is giving this that we don't really comprehend of what it is, which is grace. We don't really know completely what grace is. We act as though we do. We receive the benefits of it. We operate according to it. But do we really understand it? No. Any more than we understand God. God's basis of forgiveness is the sacrifice of his only begotten son. All our guilt, all our past, and future wrongdoings have been laid to the charge of Jesus Christ, the innocent lamb, the perfect one who knew no sin. He died for us. He bore our guilt. He suffered and died for our sins. <coughs> Paul wrote, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Jesus became sin for us, that we might be pardoned through him. In other words, he switched places with us. He took our parts, no good, and said, look, I'll put the good in you, but you got no good, so I'm going to be the good of you. 2 Corinthians 8, 9, Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be made rich. And that's not well. He has taken our sin and forgiven us through our simple faith and trust in him. How God accomplished his grace is just been defined. That is how and why God has mercy upon us. Because of his son. Now, because it really doesn't involve us, it's grace extended to us. Because it's what Jesus did, not what we can do or what we have done. It's the basis of our faith in God, which God said, if you have faith in what my son is doing, demonstrating who I am, demonstrating my love, demonstrating my mercy, and demonstrating my grace to you, then I will accept you as my children based upon my son in whom I am well pleased. So we no longer have really any righteousness before God because we admit we didn't do it. But God worked out our salvation through his son and now he imputes to us his righteousness. Meaning that he gives to us a perspective of calling us righteous. And the only way that he can do that is by extending grace to us. And so because God is the one who's extending the grace, because God is the one who has taken our place, because God is the one who is at work both to do and to will of his good pleasure, really, grace is all about him. And we're just simply receiving grace for what he has done.